So this is, as many of you might know, this is Professor Mario Mantovani and the guy in the previous slide, Professor Vishini. So they, uh, as the you know uh, innovation distinguishes the leader from a follower. So uh, there are a few clarifications since uh, I was uh, trying to restrict my talk to the complications. But there are certain confusions uh, that remain. See, what is a bar pharyngoplasty? What is different about it? Is it any different? Is it something new? Is it like reinventing wheel? No. So the concepts are very simple. Okay, barbed wire is just a tool. Okay, barbed wire is a sutureless uh, suture material where you don't have to make a tie so that it stays. If you when you pass the suture and pull it, it stays in the place where you put it. So that's the only one advantage. So these people, uh, Mantovani, they have observed people uh, like plastic surgeons, urologists using this suture material in their field. So they have adopted this to our tool so that it serves certain purpose. So this picture I added in the very last moment as I was listening to the last talk. Okay. So this is what we aim to attach, uh, you know, achieve. So the current concept with palatal surgery, what Professor Mantuvani, Professor Vishini have proposed is that so the palate, the soft palate, it has certain collapsible areas, particularly the palate of pharyngeus, which is the our area of interest because the collapse of that area leads to the maximum uh, cause of this palatal level collapse. So, and you have certain rigid structures in the palate area like the pterygomandibular raphe, you have the palatal aponeurosis and you have the pterygoid hamulus. So, these structures, if you can anchor these collapsing structures to these rigid structures, the palate is made more rigid and less likely to collapse. This is the very essence of what barbed pharyngoplasty stands for. So it could be, you know, barbed pharyngoplasty is not equal to barbed relocation pharyngoplasty. So barbed pharyngoplasty is a very broad term. It includes barbed relocation pharyngoplasty. Anterior pharyngoplasty is barbed pharyngoplasty. You have Roman blind technique. So it is a wide range of procedures which we generally refer to as barbed wire pharyngoplasty. So if this one picture can explain the entire change in the concepts of uh, our concepts of doing pharyngoplasty. So this is like what uh, Messerklinger and Stamberger did to nasal surgeries. So our current concepts is the mucosa you have to preserve wherever it is. Don't kind of cut and chop the mucosa. Mucosa you try to preserve particularly on the velopharyngeal side you treat it like gold. So you don't compromise the velopharyngeal surface mucosa at any cost. And then the adipose tissue, a lot of questions keep on coming up at every presentation. Do we need to remove the uh, you know, tonsillar pad of fat? Definitely yes, you have to remove the tonsillar pad of fat without which it's not going to work. So adipose tissue, you have to ablate. And muscle, you suspend. So you suspend to a, a much rigid structure nearby namely the pterygomandibular raphe, palatal aponeurosis or the pterygoid tabulus. And finally, lymphoid tissue like the tonsil adenoids or the lingual tonsils you have to excise. So this is the current concept of palatal surgery. If you understand this well, you will have no confusions about it. So having discussed about this, we will go into my topic that is complications of bark pharyngoplasty. So there has been a fantastic study by Professor Hugo has been part of this study. So they have done a very uh, wide, uh, you know, retrospective study on almost 800 patients who have undergone these barbed pharyngoplasties and uh, over a period of almost four years. And they have come out with the list of uh, complications that have occurred. So they, like uh, for any other surgeries, they have divided into intraoperative, short-term complications and long-term complications. So when you come to the intraoperative complications, the commonest thing will be the bleeding. So if you take bleeding, bleeding during bark pharyngoplasty commonly happens during the tonsillectomy step. So that is why important for any palatal surgery, first step is to learn to do a good adult tonsillectomy. That's the first step before venturing into any palatal surgery. If you can do a good tonsillectomy, half the job is done. So the rest of it is just simple. If you understand the concept, you can do it. The most difficult part of doing any OSI surgery is doing the non-selectomy. So particularly because you're going to be dealing with adults. 
So the most of the bleeding happens during the tonsillectomy step. And the next step where you can encounter bleeding is when you mobilize the palate of pharyngeus muscle. So that is the next common reason why you have uh, the bleeding. And the third thing is while you pass the sutures. In the morning, Vikas was demonstrating nicely where you should place the suture needle so that you avoid the bleeding that can happen. You don't go into the tonsillar bed. If you go into the tonsillar bed, you will land up with bleeding when you pass the sutures. So you have to be aware of these causes of bleeding and how to deal with them. So then, sometimes the sutures can get cut. So what do you do? Because bark uh, sutures, if it gets cut, the the logical thing is that you have to take another fresh suture and you start using it from the point where you left it. And but we, we Indians, we are used to improvisations. So we have done, we, you can make a knot at the end of the bark suture because bark sutures cost a lot. So each bark suture costs at most 3000 rupees. So what we do generally if that happens is we kind of make a knot at the end of the uh, suture and you can continue like a, you are using a new suture. So that's what you have to do when the suture snaps in, in between. Broken needle is just like anything, you try to avoid it and if it gets broken, you have to remove it and then proceed with the same uh, steps ahead. So, short term complications, you can have the throat uh, with the thread and the knot, extrusion can be there. So, obviously the pain is going to be there. Pain compared to resective palatal surgeries, it is much less, I will not say that there is no pain, <laughs> But compared to a Zeta, uh, your pain is going to resolve much earlier because let's, there is lesser tissue handling, so the bleeding kind of tends to resolve, resolve early. So other things like velopharyngeal insufficiency, dehiscence and other things are all extremely rare if you uh, ask me and the statistics also uh, you know, says uh, in our line only. So then in the long term complications. Uh, you can have this uh, foreign body sensation in the throat that was discussed widely whether we should remove the uvula or not. Sticky mucus in the throat, dysphagia, nasal regurgitation I have not had one in my practice. And even the foreign body sensation and the sticky mucus sensation, I don't know whether it is about our population or it is, uh, it is our experience. I have never had any of my patients complain about it. Uh, it's, it remains to be seen whether our patients are not bothered about it or if they do not actually experience it. But they don't complain as long as they don't complain, we are happy about it. So, then a special word about uh, suture ex exposure and extrusion. This is one complication which is specific to uh, barb pharyngoplasty. So, what is the difference between exposure and extrusion? Exposure is where in the post operative period you are able to see the uh, the thread underlying uh, under the mucosa so that is exposure and then extrusion is where the part of the suture is actually protruding outside so the protrusion can happen in two places one it can happen in the palate area and number two it can happen in the tonsillar bed so there is a difference uh, because if it happens in the palatal area it can come into contact with the tongue every time the patient tries to swallow so the patient can sometimes complain that is having a gritty sensation. In that case, you have to cut off the part that is extruding and uh, we'll come to whether we cut, does it going to make any difference to your final result? Absolutely not. So cutting a part of the suture is not going to make any difference to your results. So then comes the uh, difference between strata fix and VLOG. They are basically different materials, different way of construction. Strata fix by Epicon is supposed to have lesser chance of extrusion and exposure, but v is the widely used suture because it has a lot, it has a better tensile strength and it produces much uh, fibrous scar so that it, though it has a higher rate of extrusion and exposure, it is preferable to use a v suture that has been an accepted consensus across the globe. So then finally we come to the tips to prevent uh, these complications and tips for a safe barb pharyngoplasty surgeries. Number one has, it has been mentioned several times during the course of this uh, session, use magnification. Whatever magnification, don't try to do uh, even a tonsillectomy without magnification because magnification makes all the difference between a good plane and a wrong plane. So if you reach the wrong plane, that spoils, you know, your good work started well is, is, is half done. 
So if you start a tonsillectomy with getting into a wrong plane, nasty bleeding, then that spoils the mood and it, it sets the tone for the entire procedure. So it is important, whatever you are comfortable with, microscope, external cameras, endoscopes, whatever you are comfortable with, but never ever do, even loops you can use if you have access to loops. So whatever you are comfortable, use magnification, that's going to make your life a lot easier. So then, next important thing concerned to path for your plastic is suture needle folding. So, suture needle folding, if you ask me, this is the single most thing which determines, you know, this is this is why this is going to be the most difficult part of your learning curve because it is it, you will be using the suture needle in all the possible direction. You will be going from left to right, right to left, up to down, down to up. So you have to and morning because was mentioning i don't know whether how many of you noted he was saying that he was having trouble suturing from the left side for the residents uh, this is what uh, my professor uh, anthony told me when i was the resident he advised me when you start learning tonsillectomy itself start doing the left side tonsillectomy with your left hand so if you start practicing the, that right from your tonsillectomy stage you will not have any problems using your left hand. If you can use your left hand for the left side work, it will solve a lot of trouble for you. So, uh, suture needle holding in uh, barbed pharyngoplasty is an art. You have to learn it and as much as possible, start learning to use your left hand during tonsillectomy procedures. And then what to do with when the suture snaps, we have already saw, you use a uh, fresh suture if you are in a good setup where you can afford another suture or follow our method. So what to do when suture forms a loop? Uh, this is something it is better avoided. If you get into that, this can be a messy situation to kind of because barbed sutures has all these projections. It's kind of very difficult to untangle it once it forms a very closed knot. In that case, it is better to cut it off and then proceed with another uh, suture. But if it's not a tight loop, you can try to untangle it. So and then another thing is common uh, difficulty that patients express is that they have paresthesia and kind of tingling sensation in the palate on the long run. It is due to the uh, you know anoxia and venous congestion because you have the mouth gag on for a very long time. So because of that, it undergoes venous congestion and the blood flow is compromised for a long time. So this can result in this kind of paresthesia sensation. So what you can do is. In between the step, when you are kind of changing the position of the uh, patient, when you are try trying to move the tube from side to side, you try to release the oil Davis gag and give some time for the palate to get revascularized and then proceed. So this will completely solve that problem as well. So uh, the other thing I think we can we have already discussed what to do with when sutures extrude. So so finally so. It is, you know, we have been uh, discussing about all these things, uh, what to do, there have been several controversies, dyes or to do or not. See, my concept is very simple. We are dealing with a condition which our understanding is not still full. So we are still learning, we are still trying to understand what is the exact reason, how to address it. This is one part of the problem. Another problem is just because we don't know the complete reason of the problem doesn't mean that we should let our patients suffer. Just because we don't have an ideal solution, we cannot let our patients suffer. So the concepts just like in every medical uh, philosophy, the simple philosophy is do no harm. If you feel that your treatment is not going to do any harm to the patient, do whatever you can with your current level of understanding so that you know we are not trying to achieve perfection, we are just striving so that we achieve perfection someday. So with that note, thank you all for your patient listening. Thank you so much.